the Turtle Trading Program, that started in 1983 as an experiment to find out whether trading could be taught or was it something more of a gift, proved to be tremendous success. According to former Turtle Russell Sands, as a group, the two classes of turtles Dennis personally trained earned more than $175 million in only five years. Richard Dennis proved that trading could be taught to beginners by making them follow a set of rules. Dennis himself remarked, it was frightening how well it worked. In this video I highlighted all the rules that they were taught and how they traded. Rule number one, don't try to predict the market. The turtles were trained to be trend followers. The strategy that they followed was donkey and channel breakout, which is one of the simplest strategy you could find. In donkey and channel breakout, you buy when the price breaks the high of previous 20 days and you sell when the price breaks the low of previous 20 days. Turtles were given two systems, system 1 which considered a period of 20 days in donkey and channel, and system 2 which considered a period of 55 days. That's it, that was their strategy. That was their criteria for entry. Good traders don't try to predict what the market will do, instead they look at what the market is doing. They were told to avoid the future tense. Using sentences like, I think it will definitely go till there, or I know it will go this much more, was forbidden. In his book, The Way of Turtle, Curtis Faith, who was an original turtle of the first batch in 1983, says, You need to think about the future in terms of possibilities and probabilities rather than in terms of prediction. I had absolutely no faith in my ability to predict markets. I purposely attempted not to predict the future direction of the markets. Rule number two, think in probabilities. Turtles were given an edge with a good risk-reward ratio and told that if they follow that system, the rewards will outweigh the risks in the long run. They were trained to think long-term and avoid worrying about the outcomes of individual trades. The harsh reality of markets is that they are uncertain. The best we can hope for is to stick to an edge and think that the rewards will outweigh the risk in the long term. They followed a trend-following system, which has a low winning percentage but a high risk-to-reward ratio. They knew that most of their trades will be losers, but still they took those trades, because if they missed out on a winning trade, that could have a big impact on their equity curve. Curtis Faith in his book says, As turtles, we never knew which trade would end up being a winner and which a loser. We thought that each trade possibly could be a winner but that most probably would be loser. Thus, when we made a trade, we did not measure our personal worth by the outcome of the trade because we knew it most likely would be a losing trade. We thought in terms of probabilities, and that gave us the confidence to make decisions in the face of large degrees of risk and uncertainty. Rule number three, stay in the game. Risk in money management. In trading, you have to keep your risk at such a level that you can continue to trade even after going through string of losses, also known as the drawdown period of a system, which inevitably every trader faces. Curtis Faith writes, The primary goal of trading should be to stay in the game. Most traders overestimate their endurance capacity for pain, thinking that they live through a 30% or 40% or perhaps even 50% or 70% drawdown when they can't. This can have an extremely adverse effect on their trading because it usually results in their stopping completely or changing methods at the worst possible time, after they have incurred a drawdown and suffered significant losses. The uncertainty of the future is what makes trading so difficult, and people do not like uncertainty. There are two parts of risk management. 1. The stop loss size. 2. The position size. Risk on a trade equals stop loss size times position size. It must be less than 2% of your current account size. Turtles used ATR for their stop losses. ATR or average true range which determines the average range in price movement that a particular market makes in a single day. The turtles built position pieces which they called units. Units were sized such that one ATR represented the current account equity. One unit equals 1% of current account size divided by ATR. Rule number four, be consistent. This was perhaps the most important and the hardest rule to follow. The turtles were told to be extremely consistent in taking entry signals, because most of the profits in a year might come from only two or three large trades. If a signal was skipped or missed, it could greatly affect the returns for the year. The turtles with best trading records consistently applied the entry rules. 
the Turtles with worst records and all those who were dropped from the program failed to consistently enter positions when the rules indicated. Both the systems they were given had a different exit. In System 1, they exit when the price crosses low of previous 10 days for long positions and high of previous 10 days for short positions. In System 2, they exit when the price crosses low of previous 20 days for long positions and high of previous 20 days for short positions. According to Curtis Faith, the Turtle System exits were probably the single most difficult part of the Turtle System rules. Waiting for a 10 or 20 day new low can often mean watching your 20%, 40%, or even 100% of significant profits to evaporate. There is a strong tendency to want to exit earlier. It requires great discipline to watch your profits evaporate in order to hold on to your positions for the really big move. The ability to maintain discipline and stick to the rules during large winning trades is the hallmark of the experienced successful trader. Only the traders who consistently executed the system and the rules stayed till the end, the rest, more than half of all those who started, were dropped. You have to execute your plan consistently to achieve the positive expectation of your system. Curtis Faith writes, the difference in return had nothing to do with knowledge and everything to do with emotional and psychological factors. It seemed crazy to me. We all had been taught exactly the same thing, but my return was three times that of the others in the class or more. I based my strategy on the belief that Dennis would be evaluating us on our ability to execute the systems we were taught. I also thought he would look more favorably on trades faithfully executed that incurred losses than on trades we should have taken but did not, even if that avoided losses. If you liked the video please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.